Hey guys, welcome back. We're going to do uh, chapter 3 here, and uh, we're on our third set of notes for chapter 3. Each section from here on out is going to be one of those four major groups of macromolecules that make up living things. Uh, you'll recall those were carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. Uh, not necessarily in that order, but we're going to do little short videos for each one, make it a little easier for you to kind of digest no pun intended, um, each individual little area. So uh, let's jump right into it here. Carbohydrates is where we're starting. We call them carbs. Um, we talk about this quite a bit from a dietary point of view, like low carb diets, no carb diets, and, and good carbs and bad carbs and that kind of junk. Um, that only covers a small portion of what is actually a carbohydrate for biological organisms. Um, when you think carbs in your everyday conversations, we're probably thinking like, uh, bread, rice, that kind of stuff. Uh, really, carbs are any sugar. And so this is a lot broader view in, in biology than it is from uh, your everyday dietary kind of conversations. So uh, carbohydrates, what are they? The single most plentiful molecule in the biosphere. So uh, most of what we eat are carbs. Uh, most of what makes up plants are carbs. Uh, so carbs are very, very important. <clears throat> Pardon me. Carbs are very, very important for biological organisms. Um, cells use carbs as structural materials. You can build with them. Uh, you can use them for fuel. You can store energy for later. You can transport energy to another part of your body with them. Uh, you can do a lot with carbs. And so that's why we use them for so much. Uh, carbo, a carb, what we call a carb, is short for carbohydrate. And carbohydrate's a super logical name because it is carbon, which is the easy thing. We know what carbon is. Uh, carbon that's hydrated. And so if you're hydrated, you've got a lot of water in you. And so it is a long molecule whose ratio basically boils down to CH2O. Sorry for the sloppy handwriting. CH2O is a hydrated carbon. And so carbohydrates are made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen in that ratio. One to two to one. And there's a little bit of variation with that. Um, it's not always just dead on one to two to one, but it's very close over a huge group of molecules. And so we pretty much settle with carbohydrates. So three types of carbs in our living systems. Uh, you guys probably learned a couple of these before. Uh, monosaccharides means one sugar. And so a simple sugar like glucose. Oligosaccharides are short chain carbs so it gets kind of uh, blurry here because it's not long enough to be poly but it's more than one <laughs> so in uh, in gen bio you probably learn like monosaccharide disaccharide and polysaccharide in this text they call them monosaccharides one oligosaccharides a couple or a few a short chain and then a poly is a many and so polysaccharides, we're talking things like starches, uh, glycogens, long-term energy storage stuff. Monosaccharides, super short glucose. Oligosaccharides, somewhere in the middle. I don't know, fructose maybe, sucrose, stuff like that. Just pick something that ends in os that sounds reasonable and, and I'll believe you. So uh, let's, let's break them down individually. Monosaccharides, one sugar unit is the simplest carbohydrate, right? So if I were to ask you, What's the building blocks of carbohydrates, you would say, monosaccharides, because that's the smallest sugar we have. Uh, it's used as an energy source. You and I have glucose in our cells right now that's keeping us alive. We have glucose um, all over us that's, that's feeding cells. Uh, we can use as a structural material. Uh, you can use monosaccharides for that as well. Uh, your backbone's only going to be about five or six carbons. Your glucose is going to put you at about six. That's really as short as we can get while maintaining the properties of our sugar. Uh, sugars, not surprisingly, are very soluble in water. Um, glucose is soluble in water, which is good for us. We can transport it in our bloodstream. Uh, it's also good because we can make things like lemonade. It'd be gross if all the sugar just sank to the bottom, but because sugar dissolves in water, we can make things like lemonade and coffee and, and tea and that kind of stuff. So our examples of monosaccharides are glucose, which we're very familiar with, and ribose. Ribose is the sugar 
in uh, DNA. So kind of cool. I didn't know that was not one you hear about very often anyways as a simple sugar, but it is ribose, a simple sugar. Glucose and ribose, cool. So that's monosaccharides. Oligosaccharides. We have a short chain, more than one, but not enough to be poly. Uh, we have a disaccharide. Di means two. That would be sucrose. And so here we take uh, glucose and we add a fructose to it. And if we're hooking these together, what type of reaction is that? What's that called? From our last lecture. Hopefully you said condensation because that is the reaction that hooks simple monomers together. So we take a glucose, simple sugar, we hook a fructose, simple sugar, we get a sucrose. This is our table salt, our table salt, sorry, table sugar, the stuff that you put in coffee and on top of cereal that's gross and that kind of stuff. So there's sucrose, a disaccharide. And because it's condensation, we get water as a product. Here you can see this hydrogen and the hydroxide group come away. This oxygen bonds to this carbon, and you get this structure right here. So we're using the stuff we learned just last section already to make sugars. Thankfully, plants do this so that we can get those sugars, eat them in our breakfast cereal, and then we break this with hydrolysis and break it up into our glucose and fructose for us later. So that takes us to polysaccharides. Poly is many. These can be straight chains or they can be branched chains and it's many simple sugar monomers all bonded together. The most common polysaccharides are cellulose, which is the structural material for plant cell walls. So it's what gives the structure to plants. Uh, starch, which you think starchy foods is like uh, potatoes, rice, that kind of stuff. Uh, starch is the long-term energy storage for plants. And then glycogen, which is not as familiar to us, but that is the long-term energy storage for you and I. We actually will build that, put it in our liver and muscles for when we're hungry later. We can break it apart. If you're a plant, you take your simple glucose you make with photosynthesis, you build a big old starch molecule and you store it down in a carrot or you store it down in a potato and then later when you need it you pull that energy out for later uh, you may find this hard to believe but plants don't do that so we can eat them <laughs> they do it so they can survive long periods of time to make more plants but uh, nonetheless we pull them out and eat their starch so um, all of these guys are very different structurally very different functionally but they're all built of glucose glucose monomers and each has a different pattern of covalent bonding they have different chemical properties but they're all just really long chains of glucose so it's pretty amazing when you think about how many you know people and animals and plants and, and ecosystems that are storing energy with just glucose really and and we can do it in all these different ways because uh, basically because carbon's flexible so pretty cool so cellulose cellulose is our polysaccharide like I told you, it makes plant cell walls, and so it's major structural material for plants. Uh, it's really long, really straight chains of glucose monomers. It does not dissolve in water. Uh, you and I do not digest cellulose well. To tell you the truth, not much digests cellulose well. Really, the only reason cattle can eat grass is because they have just guts full of bacteria, and the cows aren't even really digesting it the millions and millions of bacteria are digesting the grass, then the cow, you know, barfs it up and chews its cud and throws it back down for more bacteria. Um, even the animals that digest cellulose don't really digest it. The bacteria have to do it for them. Uh, so it's hard to break down cellulose, but a lot of animals can use bacteria to do it and they can survive on it. You and I, however, cannot. Uh, we call this stuff fiber. <laughs> or roughage in our foods, which basically means it's, uh, it's coming out the way it went in. This is not stuff that's going to give us uh, much for energy. Uh, there are some benefits to it, but really it's just fiber. So it's stuff that you can't digest. And here it is. This is a microscopic view, more than microscopic, <laughs> of a plant cell wall. It is glucose hooked to glucose, hook to glucose, hook to glucose, hook to glucose. All together, they're very strong. You think this is, you know, a blade of grass in its simplest form. You know, here it is. 
This is the edge of a blade of grass. It's just cellulose. It's little glucose all put together. So here's starch, switching gears. Starch is a polysaccharide as well. But for plants, instead of building with it, we're going to store energy with it. So we call it an energy reservoir, a place you store things. Um, covalent bonding between our monomers is going to make a chain instead of this nice straight line we had before with cellulose. Uh, again, starch is not really going to dissolve in water, uh, but it is a little less stable than cellulose, uh, which makes a lot of sense if you're a plant because you want to be able to break down your starch later to use that energy. And if you have something that's super, super stable, well, you're not going to be able to break it apart. So you got to have kind of this just right strength uh, where it'll stay together, but we can break it apart when we need it. Uh, starch is an important component of human food. You think root vegetables and how much we eat um, foods that have a lot of starch in them, corn and wheat and bread and potatoes and carrots and cassava and all of these different foods uh, that are really high in starch. And it's, it's just a lot of energy, really. And so you can feed birds with it. You can feed us with it. It's a lot of energy. So let's stop for just a second, show you a short animation about how cellulose and starch are similar and how they're different. The key to the difference in the properties between the two plant oligosaccharides, amylose, a form of starch, and cellulose, is their different bonding patterns. In amylose, the covalent bonds angle each monomer with respect to the next in line, and the chain coils like a spiral staircase. Such coils are not especially stable. Many OH groups project outward from the coiled chains, making the molecules readily accessible to enzymes. Cool. So energy storage, we want to be able to get enzymes in there and break this guy up later. Cell wall, we want this thing to survive forever, right? You don't eat the two by fours that make up your house. You want those there forever. So getting an enzyme in here, pretty difficult. Getting an enzyme in here, not so bad. There's lots of gaps where enzymes could get in. So structure determines function. Remember this? Structure determines function. A long coil that's easy to digest, good. A straight chain that's hooked to other straight chains, good for structure, not so good for digestion. In cellulose, many glucose chains stretch out side by side and hydrogen bond to one another at OH groups. This bonding arrangement stabilizes the chains into a tightly bundled pattern that resists digestion, at least by most enzymes. There you have it. So some differences between starch and cellulose. So uh, one thing that I don't want you to confuse, the video called them oligosaccharides. Uh, your book's calling them polysaccharides. So let's stick with poly. Cellulose is pretty long. I'm pretty sure it's polysaccharides. So let's stick with that. So here you have it. Simple glucose hooked to simple glucose hooked to simple glucose over time turns into this super awesome, huge starch molecule. So thank you, potatoes. Now glycogen, you and I are on the scene now. Glycogen, it's a polysaccharide for animals and for humans. So covalent bonding gives us these highly branched chains of glucose monomers. We're still just building with glucose and they make energy storage for animal cells. Uh, for us, it's primarily in our muscles and in our liver. Uh, the muscles are for obvious reasons. As you move around, you use a lot of energy. The liver can break this down into glucose and release it into the bloodstream if you haven't eaten in, you know, half a day or something like that. And so glycogen is very important for animals. And here's glycogen. Nothing, nothing too fancy, you know. It's glucose hooked to glucose, hooked to glucose, hooked to glucose. It just has some branching. So plenty of sites to access for enzymes, plenty of space for enzymes to get in here and break this guy up into simpler glucose molecules. And so it, it really serves its purpose well for us. Now here's one you don't hear about too often. This is called chitin. Now chitin is still a carbohydrate, but we don't normally eat it. A uh, few countries do. I shouldn't be so quick to make that generalization. A few countries eat this uh, quite a bit, but chitin <clears throat> is a polysaccharide that has nitrogen in it. And that nitrogen is going to add a lot of strength to this molecule. And it is going to form the hard structures on um, insects, 
crabs, exoskeletons of, uh, you know, cockroaches. This is the reason cockroaches pop when you step on them is because you're rupturing this very, very hard chitin shell. So you think about a crab or a beetle, and this is actually a lot of strength. Uh, some cell walls of fungi are made of chitin as well. And so not so great on the energy storage part of things, but for a structurally sound molecule, it's pretty good. Uh, you can use this to uh, build shells and exoskeletons of all sorts of cool little animals. So take home message for carbs. What are carbs? They are simple sugars. We hook simple sugars together and we get a lot of different complex carbs that can be used by different plants and animals to store energy, build a structure, that kind of stuff. Cells use our carbs for energy and as structural materials. So that is all for carbohydrates. I hope you learned something. Uh, thank you.